Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world today. Um, and thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, we uh, will be getting starting in just uh, 30 seconds to allow some other people to join. Uh, so bear with us just for a little while. Right, uh, let's get started. Um, so thanks everyone for joining uh, this, uh, this webinar on improving TR69 and USP interoperability through certification. Uh, today, as you can see from that title, we will be focusing on what is a refresher, but also um, some exciting new developments in our TR69 and USP interop and certification programs, um, especially uh, introducing the opportunity for doing some self-testing. Uh, so when you take into consideration across those two uh, initiatives, you know, there's well over a billion devices worldwide uh, that requires interop and certification testing to achieve the, uh, the program certificates. Uh, so it's really a massive opportunity for us within the broadband forum to help both application providers, consumer electronics, IoT providers, and the service providers to really increase the speed to certification and to reduce the cost of going through all those processes. So um, hopefully you're gonna enjoy this session. Just to let you know, we will be recording the session and uh, after the event, we will be sending an email to all of you that have registered to see where you can down, uh, download the recording as well as a copy of the slides themselves. And then from a housekeeping point of view, finally, I'd like to just say that if you do have any questions, uh, for Jason today, uh, please enter them in the Q&A section of the Zoom webinar. You'll find that in the bottom middle uh, tab of your Zoom window. Uh, so please enter all your questions there. That allows us, A, to keep an eye on the questions and make sure they're asked. Uh, but also, if we don't have time to answer all of them, we can come back to you um, with written responses to anything that we can't cover during this session. So joining with me today, uh, we have probably somebody that's very well known to you all, uh, Jason Walls from QA Cafe, who is also our Director of Broadband User Services Work Area within the Broadband Forum. And he's really gonna be driving the discussion points in this tutorial as well as webinar on the new developments inside of USP and TR69. Jason, over to you. All right. Co-director John John also. Ah, helped, of yeah. course, yes. I, I I like to not make it confusing. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Um, I I wanted to start by you know just sort of welcoming everybody. Uh, you know, obviously I've seen the registration list, and there's a lot of friendly faces, um, people who have been involved with TR69 uh, since the beginning. I mean, if you think about it was at this point 17 years ago that we made the the standard the first version of the standard but i was i was actually excited to remember that this year is actually the 15th anniversary of the first interoperability plug fest uh which is really cool and it was it was a crazy time there was a lot of people there and what was nice about those events was it allowed us to work out so many things about the standard that we you know either hadn't thought of or were you know or weren't necessarily clear and it uh, it allowed us to to move along very rapidly with the with uh, the success of of tier sixty nine. So I thought that was pretty cool, um, and that dovetails with certification, which we're going to talk about today. So, what are we going to co cover today? Um, we're going to talk about what self testing means, which is the new testing process uh, for the BBF.069 and BBF.369 certification programs. Uh, and then I'm going to show you, I'll go over that entire process and, and how it works and how you can get your devices certified. Um, I'm going to talk about how you are how you determine which tests you were supposed to run, both for BBF 69, BBF 369, um, to uh, to explain sort of you know what the actual minimum requirements are, um, what you should test, and how that ends up translating into the listing. Um, we'll talk about how you maintain that certification and how you can. Um, push it onto products that are based off of a product that has gotten certified. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about why you should get certified and then we'll talk about what we're gonna be doing in the future. All right, so what is self-testing? 
Um, this is this, you know, we, we, we introduced this concept with the BBF.369 uh, test process for USP. Uh, but we realized that uh, it's we had all of the mechanisms at our disposal now to be able to translate it back into uh, the BBF.069 program. Um, what it means is that we, we have a method by which you can run the certification yourselves in your own labs um, and then uh, take the results and submit the results to a test agency and the test agency is able to sign off on those results. Um, and that really reduces the bottleneck of what is necessary to get certified. And we feel like uh, it's a really good opportunity for anyone who is seeking certification um, to be able to do it much more quickly than they did before. Um, so the the uh, the process, the, the there is approved tools. There's, there's one approved tool now and that can be used to run the appropriate tests. Um, as determined by your supported features. Uh, you can run uh, this with an, your own copy of the tool, or you can, you know, you can obviously outsource it to a third party who has access to um, one of the approved tools. Um, this allows you to test as often as necessary. So you can just keep running them until you pass everything and then uh, submit your results. And, uh, and uh, it, it, those, those results are secured um, and signed and that way the lab can know that they haven't been tampered with and uh, they can look them over and, and give you that certification. So the process kind of looks like this. Uh, the first step for everyone is to determine those supported features. That determines which test cases are mandatory for you to run. Um, then run as many times as you want with the approved tool. Um, submit those results to the approved lab and then uh, you'll get your certification listing and uh, the certified logo and uh, you'll have you know all of the benefits that you would normally have of getting that product certified. I'm going to go over these steps a little bit. Uh, so what do you have to test? How do you determine what it is that you're supposed to test? Well, ideally, you should test everything, but not really everything. Everything that you have that is supported by the product that is under test. <laughs> So don't get too nervous. It's not like we, we designed, you know, both of the test plans are modular um, and, you know, they're designed so that you uh, can test the things that you support and don't have to test things you don't support. However, you must test the things that you do support. There are no optional tests in uh, TP69 or ATP69 uh, or in uh, TP469, which is the test plan for USP. Uh, all endpoints under test must be run against all of the tests that apply to the features whoop, that apply to the features that they support. Um, we've had that. I've, uh, I've I've made this slide because we've had some situations in the past where um, you know people were interpreting conditional mandatory as optional, and as a result, they didn't run certain tests that were very baseline tests. This is in the USP case. Um, and then they ended up not working in the real world. So we want to make sure that that's avoided. Um, so it, it, we, we define these things as conditional and conditional mandatory. And conditional mandatory means uh, that if you do support that feature, you must do that test. And the nice thing is that the certification lists will show the conditional tests that you passed. Um, so it might be either a feature list or uh, you know some uh, the, the actual test cases that were passed if people look at the report. Um, so combined with those two things, you put those two things together and then somebody looking at your certification can be like, oh, I, I know that they support the features that I need for my deployment. Uh, and like I said, if, you, if you're testing fewer than all of the supportive features, then it will result in interoperability problems. Um, it's a little different for tier 69 versus USP. Um, for TP69, um, each test case is listed as mandatory, as in it's made for testing the baseline protocol. Uh, alternatively, it is made a uh, conditional mandatory um, and it's specified which features are supported uh, that would require you to run that test. Um, and the BBF.069 listing includes the supported features uh, explicitly in the listing and I'll show you that in a minute. And then on TP469, um, the, uh, there's a supported feature table in the beginning of the test plan. And there's, the table has feature IDs associated with everything. And those feature IDs end up getting listed uh, in your certification. Um, some of those feature IDs list certain TR181 profiles to kind of make it easier. So, you know, we say you have to support this profile in order to be able to do these tests. 
And then for TP469, there are some tests that are not in force. Um, and that just means that we haven't had a product that supports them go through the beta program yet. And so those test cases aren't part of the certification program, but you can still do them. And we actually encourage people to do them because then we can take those tests and put them as in force. So let me actually open that up real quick. I'm gonna take a look at this. So the, this is where you can find uh, the test plans and uh, abstract the, the uh, TP69 is abstracted. So if you remember, you can access the entire thing with all the procedures and everything. But if you want to just an overview of the test cases, this is here. I already have it open here, but I just wanted to point this page out because uh, you can also access um, TP469 here, uh, but that will just take you to the website. So this is ATP69. Uh, and if you go, you can see the list of all the test cases. And if I click on any one of these things, so you can see one here that's mandatory because it has to do with the baseline protocol. Let's see if I can, and you can see one here, for example, um, that is conditional mandatory uh, that you support sec secure seat of MP sessions. Of course that, actually, I think that is actually required now, but I just want to give you an example of those two things. Got some messages coming in on the chat, everything okay over there? <laughs> All right. So that's for ATP69, uh, for the BBF.069 test program. So for so like I was saying, it, with conditional mandatory, if you support secure CWMP sessions, then you have to do 5.34. And then when you are listed for the BBF069 certification, you'll see here that we list the supported features, right? So if you're looking for a certified product and you want to know what tests they did, you can find it on the Broadway Forum website and it'll be included with their listing. For USP, uh, the test plan can be found at usptest.broadwayforum.org or if you just go to usp.technology, you will find all of these things, all of these resources here. But if we go to uh, mandatory versus conditional mandatory tests, uh, you can see that there are some baseline required profiles and then these feature IDs. And these, some of these are very rudimentary because we knew there might be devices out there that maybe they just don't support any commands and we wanna make sure that they can still get certified. Um, so this gets very granular, uh, but when you end up uh, getting your BBF.369 certification, it, there's in the table is a list of these numbers that can be used to look up to, uh, to see what you did. And in, in this call, as you can see in this table, every single uh, entry tells you which test cases apply to this. And as we update uh, TP469, then you, uh, you, you'll see these things update and we will probably add more feature IDs as things go. Um, this asterisk here um, means that they are not in force yet. Okay. Let's talk about what it means to maintain that certification. Uh, okay, in order to be certified, uh, you must be at least an auditing member of the broadband forum. Uh, that is the lowest uh, membership level that there is other than indiv individual, but I don't, I don't think that that will ever apply to getting certification. Um, you can be certified as a primary product or certified as a derivative product. And what that means is that uh, if you have made some permissible changes uh, to a device uh, that don't alter the, the, uh, the protocol stack for tier 69 or USP in any way, nor alter uh, how they um, interact with the underlying system, uh, then you can you can basically transfer that certification over to that derivative product and not have to keep doing the certification every single time every single time you update wait the firmware of that device because we realize that that would be kind of untenable. Um, so this is the quote from uh, the test program document, and it says that examples of permissible changes include but are not limited to uh, changing number interfaces on a, pro on a derivative model of a product uh, or upgrading the uh, the system software in a way that does not alter the SIMP or USB software stack, uh, nor its uh, 
integration with the underlying system and APIs. That's the official quote. Um, and so during that process, it's actually the test agency that, that uh, you know, can go back and forth and be like, well, is this a derivative product? We're not sure. And ultimately the broadband form makes that, that judgment. Um, these, te and these test program documents are uh, private documents. They're open to broadband forum members. Um, they have some rather esoteric numbers uh, for the tier 69 program. I think it's OD 360 or 361. And for the other one, it's uh, OD 469 or something like that. Anyway, if, if you're a broadband forum member, you can find them on the BBF wiki. <laughs> Uh, I knew that I would probably get a question about this, so I put a slide in here for this, and that is, um, how is it that you, uh, how does certification apply to the fact that there's open source projects out there? Now, there's no official open source uh, for tier 69 or CWMP, but there definitely are solutions that are out there. Um, I don't think that they, that any of the open source solutions out there have gone through certification. I could be wrong about that. I don't think I remember the last time I looked. Um, and then obviously for USP, there's the OB USP uh, agent project. Um, so in the, in the latter case, you know, we, we use that open source project to help validate the, the test plan. Uh, but remember that it is a reference implementation. Um, and even for open source CMP stacks, you know, you're still gonna be doing a lot of integration. Um, and so all implementation, implementations still need to be certified individually, even if, uh, you know, even if some open source uh, solution has gotten the certification. Uh, you know, you, you still have to certify devices that use it because uh, there's going to be a lot of changes and a lot of hooks uh, that, that are built in while you're doing that development. Um, I have this diagram here because this is kind of how we view the world at the Broadband Forum, right? Uh, the combination of these three things, the testing, the standards, and the open source are really what makes these solutions work and work well. Um, and as, you know, as we've seen over the years, uh, interoperability is best done through a combination of certification testing and plug fests and that kind of thing. And uh, doing these things all together really makes uh, the industry as a whole more successful. And speaking of which, why is it uh, that you would wanna get your product certified? Um, we, we talked a little bit ab about this last year in our USP workshop, um, but you know, it applies to tier 69 and USP. Um, you know, the, we do live in a multi-vendor world, even for operators who are deploying their own devices or writing their own software, they're still working, uh, you know, working directly with OEMs sometimes, um, you know, and so we, we the, the multi-vendor environment is, is the norm, it is a reality right now. Um, and we want to make sure that the, the endpoints, the agents and the CDMP endpoints are able to work with the ACSs and USB controllers that are out there. Um, that would be especially important for USP, you know, since the number and kinds of controllers that could be out there are quite numerous um, and they can fulfill many, many different use cases. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that that ecosystem is going to be realistic and, and work um, because that makes your, your, you know, products globally applicable. Um, you know, they'll be able to pop into any provider or any, uh, you know, any deployment scenario and, and work. Um, and we, we like certification, uh, especially self-certification because it lets you work with, you know, uh, continuous integration environments, you know, and, and agile processes so that you can fail fast and identify those things that uh, it's much easier to fix when you're doing the development than it is to fix when it's a problem in the field, obviously, um, when you catch those things early in the development cycle. Um, and it does allow you to write the, uh, you know, the underlying code one time uh, and let you hopefully port it to multiple platforms. So that is the, the brief overview of how it is that we uh, are doing these self-testing programs and why you should do them in the new way of doing stuff. Um, I, I, I imagined that we're going to get many, many different questions, but I do want to hand back over to Craig really quick to talk about the other broadband forum certifications are out, that are out there and some of our other uh, test programs that are helping drive this forward. Thanks, Jason. Um, so it's a great work. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this slide, but uh, just to you know cover uh, some of the other work that we're doing through certification and testing programs. You know, obviously we've just covered now the the BBF 069 and 369, and many of you will be aware of our other test agencies out there that are working on the BBF 247, for example, uh, which is not just GPON ONUs now, but obviously extended to uh, 
XGPON and XGSPON uh, for interoperability on the ONU side. Um, the BBF337 GFAS, which has been going successfully for a number of years now, as well as the 398 Wi-Fi, where we are at this present time um, going through some beta testing uh, with a number of, of vendors and supported by service providers' needs. And that's going to be extended out throughout this year. So uh, keep your eye out on that, both for the results of the beta tests that we're doing, but also uh, the new issue two, uh, which will be supplying press releases that has now gone through um, final uh, publications, uh, as well as a number of extended BBF Wi-Fi 3, uh, 398 programs that we'll be doing this year. And of course, there's the plug fest as well as the interoperability stuff that we're doing. Um, the next plug fest that we're doing will be on the GFAST, which is on April, starts April the 19th and going all the way through to May the 7th. Of course, that's virtual in the world that we have today. Uh, we're not asking you to uh, to get into the labs yourself. So we're doing a virtual uh, plug fest on the GFAST uh, with, a, with a number of vendors already uh, signed up for that. So if you want, are interested in that, please do reach out to uh, the team here at the Broadband Forum and we'll get you involved in that one as soon as possible. Um, and that's pretty much it um, from the presentation side. Let's move into some q and I think. Um, and we've got some Q&A questions coming in. Yes, we have um, some good questions coming in already. Um, right. There. So in terms of like either, you know, product competitive product information uh, or costs and stuff like that, obviously we won't be able to answer questions like that on the call today. Uh, but, uh, you know, the uh, if, if it's appropriate for us to follow up with some of those questions, we will definitely do so. Um, let me address uh the question about which labs um so obviously i can't answer any questions about cost but so as of right basically any anyone that um goes through the process of becoming an, a approved test agency by the broadband forum uh can validate those self-test reports uh, but that is specific to the test program um so an agency will be like okay i can cert i can approve uh, BBF.069 results, or I can approve BBF.369 results. Um, so they do that individually. Um, I, as far as I know right now, uh, for for USP and tier 69, that is uh, the University of New Hampshire Interoperability Lab is the, the one that approves those. Um, there are other labs out there that I know are looking to uh, get uh, approval to be to, to be labs that can that can do those uh, do the approval of the certified results for those. Uh, for some of the for the the programs that Craig was talking about, um, there I don't remember what the there's different lab. There's a lab for two forty seven. Um, UNHIOL is one is is a lab for G dot fast, um, and then there are two labs for uh, for for TR three ninety eight testing, um, and that includes Allion in um, in Taiwan and and UNHIOL. Yeah, and LAN is the one for the two four seven. Ah, yes, LAN, LAN in in France, right? France, yeah. Uh, okay, are, are there any certification programs for the ACS server side? Uh, no, there's not. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, um, and that goes both for USP and for Tier sixty nine. Uh, we never did a certification program for for the controller side or the ACS side, a because it was difficult. It's from a sheer protocol and technological perspective, it is difficult to stimulate them to do things. Um, whereas you know, with with tier six, with 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 an agent or with an endpoint, um, you know, if you have control over what the uh, over over the uh, over the ACS or controller as a test harness, uh, you know you can send stuff and get the agent to do stuff, uh, but it's 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 much more difficult to get the controller or the ACS side to do things. And so the number of things that we could do uh, in order to test them it was is very limited. So we you know we kind of decided not to do that. We might do that in the future with USP controllers, uh, as the north we're standardizing the northbound REST API. Um, so if that gets standardized, it'll make it a little bit easier to do that level of control to stimulate the things that need to happen and and all that. So it's mostly a, a technological barrier uh, on the ACS side. And then also uh, for tier 69, you know, the, the ship had sailed for many years <laughs> on the ACS side before before we had launched the certification. So it wasn't that uh, realistic.
Um, I, I, there is a, question, a CD writer question that I can follow up with afterwards. I don't want to necessarily field those on the call here. Uh, there is a question I see about those derivative products. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, you don't necessarily, you don't have to uh, get recertified every time you update the software or firmware or device. Uh, as long as there is nothing that has been broken about, you know, about the CWP or USB software stack. And that judgment is made as part of the test process. But uh, we did realize that it would be unrealistic to expect that to happen. <laughs> uh, there, there is a question about um, doing uh, Wi-Fi mes mesh management. And I would actually point... Um, point you in the direction of uh, some of the other webinars that we've done. Uh, we've done a couple on Wi-Fi management uh, in the recent past, and you can find those all on the Broadband Forum website, and some of them just straight up on the Broadband Forum YouTube channel. Uh, but the other thing I did want to talk about there is that we are uh, working on improving that in the uh, Broadband Forum data model. Um, there's going to be another version of that coming out later this year that has a lot of work done uh, in tandem with other people in the industry who are all looking at uh, the management of Wi-Fi mesh. So look forward to that because it will, um, you know, we'll have a lot of materials around how that works. Um, probably another webinar that kind of explains how, how that all works uh, when, when that's all finalized. Uh, how would this new self-testing scheme guard against cheating? Uh, that's that's a great question. Uh, one of the ways is having those signed and certified results, right? So the results themselves can't be tampered with. Uh, and unless they're doing some really fancy stuff behind the scenes to make sure that the, you know, the USP data model is lying about what the product is too, uh, or the tier 69 data, data model is lying about what the product is, then uh, that that I'd be impressed by the effort that people would be put in to do that. But if it is discovered that that is the case and somebody knows that, then please, by all means, obviously report it to the broadband forum and broadband forum will look into it. Um, and, you know, that kind of stuff will, will end up violating the, the test program and probably get you removed from certification. <laughs> Let's see some other stuff coming in on chat. Don't forget to use um, the, uh, the Q&A box there. Uh, is the, the self-testing tool for uh, for USP for TR369 is ready now, um, and it has been ready for a bit. Uh, we are also in the process of adding some new test cases to the test plan uh, that will be out later this year. Um, the the people who are certified for that uh, are, it's I, right now, I think there's just one, but they were the ones that sort of helped us uh, get along in doing, uh, validating the uh, the test plan and stuff like that. Uh, we did so yeah so we did get uh another question about managing mesh wi-fi in on the chat and if there is a specific data model uh some of that is currently in um 2.14 so if we go to uh my little web browser here if you go to data models for usp you're going to want to go and it, You'll find the same thing for, for tier 69 if you go to cdmpdatamodels.broadbandform.org. Um, if you go to device two and, and you look at the full uh, device 2.14. Uh, we have the, uh, the multi-AP object. Um, And, uh, and the uh, data elements object that gives the raw, uh, you know, Wi-Fi Alliance data elements information. Um, but as I said, we're in the process of adding even more functionality to these objects in the data model, so. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I can act, I'll, I'll answer that one. Um, if you do go to um, the 
website to our website to QA Cafe's website um, and go to our support page. Um, all of the uh, the user guides um, and the full list of all the test cases that are supported are there. Um, there's actually a page specifically of all of the test cases supported. So if you want to look those up, uh, you can there. No, I'll actually put that in the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a question here about um, the, for USP, the message transfer protocols. Um, so the test tool supports them all. The test plan for certification doesn't have any test cases for MQTT in it yet. Uh, however, that doesn't mean as long as you support one, at least one of the, the transports that, uh, that are in TP469, you can still get certified. Um, and the tool itself does support doing uh, USP over MQTT. We just, there aren't any test cases yet for it, but there will be later this year. Okay. I knew this would be kind of short and sweet. I, you know, we do have a couple more questions about the mesh management. Um, I think it would be best to uh, follow up with those afterwards. I'm glad that those questions are being asked because that really is the pain point behind the energy that we're feeling behind not just USP but tier six nine two. Uh, you know, the, the managed Wi-Fi is like the biggest, most important use case for everyone right now, and we understand that. So we're we're on top of it. <laughs> One more coming in. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a question about the certification process detecting uh, stability. Um, that's not part of the official test plan. Uh, I will tell you that um, the, the official certification test tool does have test cases uh, for stability, right? So we'll, you know, let you be able to have you do things for long periods of time over several days and have the tests constantly running. And um, it's funny you mentioned that because we actually did just do a webinar on that topic uh, about how, you know, it's something that often gets missed uh, that if there's device that is running and running normal user behavior for a long period of time, especially on Wi Fi, we've had some interesting uh, results where uh, a device will suddenly see a ridiculous performance drop or, uh, or just, you know, just stop working entirely. Uh, so yes, that it's definitely possible to do uh, with testing. Uh, it's not part of the certification. If you want tests like that to be part of the certification, by all means, um, propose them to the broadband forum. Make them official test cases. Uh, you know, you can if as a member, it's very easy to contribute, um, and we're we're nice people, and we uh, will help you get uh, get those things approved in 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 the test plan. I, th I think that's a great idea. That's that's funny that we haven't really considered something like that in the past because it's. It's not as cut and dry as some of the other certification uh, tests, but there might be a way we could do that. Okay. That seems to be it for the while, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagined that this would be um, short and sweet and direct as the, the information should be clear and uh, if you have any questions at all, obviously, you know, reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to, uh, you can reach out to myself, Jason at QACafe.com. Um, you can actually, Rhonda, do you want to throw a link to the uh, Broadband Forum Slack channel? I don't know if we have that readily available. But so if you're a Broadband Forum member and you're on the Broadband Forum Slack, uh, we have a, um, we have a couple of channels for, for testing questions. Um, or you can, you know, you can chat at any of us on there. Okay. Um, right. So at this stage, I just, you know, obviously, as always, like to thank Jason uh, for, for doing this. Um, hopefully, if you've got any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if we did miss any questions, then uh, we will respond post-event. 
and keep your eye out for a uh, link to the recording as well as the slides if you need them. Uh, but other than that, just want to thank everybody for joining. Thanks so much. Uh, really appreciate it and hope to see you all really, really soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody.